Today, humanity's most important weapon is information. Its value is growing faster than oil, gold, or Bitcoin. Governments are spending billions of dollars on systems that guarantee them an advantage in decision-making speed. Whoever receives and processes the data fastest wins. This logic became fundamental in the creation of the SR-72, a reconnaissance aircraft capable of arriving at a desired point at hypersonic speed, collecting data, and then disappearing before the enemy has even realized what happened. Can the Blackbird Sun surpass its legendary ancestor? That's exactly what we'll be finding out. When the last SR-71 rolled down the tarmac at Beale Air Force Base, California in January 1990, it seemed the era of high-speed reconnaissance was over. The world was changing, the Cold War was waning, satellite constellations were proliferating, and the cost of operating the Blackbird seemed prohibitive even for the Pentagon. There was a strong feeling that no one would ever risk approaching the hypersonic barrier again, let alone attempting to break it on a regular basis while sitting inside a reusable manned aircraft. However, the history of aviation moves in cycles, where each new one is born right where the old one left unresolved questions. However, it took about 30 years before the US again began talking about an aircraft that would fly so fast that it would be simply impossible to intercept it either by existing or future enemy air defenses. The legend is officially returned, but under a different number, the SR-72, determined to become the answer to the challenges of the 21st and 22nd centuries. Coming to the United States to fill its pioneering role in the field of hypersonic technologies, it's set to reclaim what it had partially lost in recent decades. Granted, said offspring will have to try hard to surpass the SR-71, which still holds several world records that are unattainable even for the most advanced 6th generation jet aircraft in US service today. Namely, the absolute speed record for a manned jet aircraft flying in July 1976 at a speed of approximately Mach 3.3 or 2,193 miles per hour. An absolute altitude record in level flight achieved by a flight completed at an altitude of 85,069 feet on the same July day in 1976, but by a different crew. And a New York to London speed record of 1,807 miles per hour two years earlier in September 1974. Financial disclosures provided one of the clearest signals yet. Lockheed documents filed with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, revealed that the company had exceeded its budget by at least $335 million since 2022 on a classified program. In March 2025, they were left without contracts to supply fighter jets to the U.S. Air Force and Navy, and in the summer of that year, they were forced to announce a $1.6 billion loss in the second quarter. The blame for all of the above lies again with continued challenges on a highly classified aircraft program that can only be described as a game-changing capability for our joint U.S. and international customers, and therefore it's critical that it be successfully fielded, based on information provided by Lockheed CEO Jim Takelet during a conference call on the company's financial results. What's even more interesting is that Lockheed's regular record of excessive spending began to occur precisely after the company announced in the summer of 2021 the opening of a new advanced manufacturing facility in Palmdale, California called Building 648, which is part of U.S. Air Force's Plant 42. This is where Lockheed Martin Skunk Works Division regularly brings the most daring and secret ideas in American aviation to life. Building 648's primary goal is to reduce initial preparation through increased automation, particularly through the use of large, state-of-the-art robots from Electro Impact, better known by their acronym COBRA, or Combined Operation Bolting and Robotic Auto Drill. Skunk Works has previously used these robots, demonstrating their advanced capabilities in the construction of the X-59 Quiet Supersonic Technology Experimental Supersonic Aircraft, developed in collaboration with NASA as part of a project to research ways to reduce the shock wave and associated noise from sonic booms. The reason the SR-71 was consigned to museums was purely political. After all, legislators weren't so much bothered by the cost of operating this unique aircraft as by their confidence in their own conclusions that reconnaissance aircraft were rapidly becoming a thing of the past. 
However, they quickly proved themselves wrong as they scrambled to fill the gap in the U.S. Air Force by investing millions of dollars in new reconnaissance aircraft like the Northrop Grumman RQ-4 Global Hawk drones, their more secretive RQ-180, and continue to upgrade the Lockheed U-2 Dragon Lady high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft. Simply put, officials realize that, in practice, satellites alone cannot actually see everything, everywhere, all at once, only in combination with aircraft and UAVs working in concert is this possible. The first mentions of work on the SR-72 surfaced in 2007, and a year earlier, aviation fans discovered a Lockheed patent on diverterless hypersonic inlet DHI, for high-speed air-breathing propulsion system. From this, we also learned that design enables high vehicle fineness ratios, low observable features, and enhances ramjet operability limits. DHI is optimized for a particular design flight Mach number. A four-body segment generates and focuses a system of multiple upstream shock waves at desired strengths and angles to facilitate required inlet and engine airflow conditions. The four-body contour diverts boundary layer flow to the inlet sides, effectively reducing the thickness of the boundary layer that's ingested by the inlet while maintaining the capture area required by the hypersonic propulsion system. The cowl assembly is shaped to integrate with the four-body shock system and the thinned boundary layer region. In 2013, Lockheed again mentioned a 60-foot-long demonstrator comparable in size to their F-22 Raptor fighter jets with a single engine and the ability to fly at Mach 6 for several minutes. It was planned to be ready for testing as early as 2018, taking into account the development schedule of the high-speed strike weapon missile. The final result, according to Lockheed, should be up to 100 feet long and have a range no less than that of its heroic ancestor, the SR-71. That same year, 2013, the U.S. Air Force put a stop to the SR-72's turbines by refusing to fund the SR-72 program and instead deciding to focus on developing the very same Northrop RQ-180 drone we mentioned earlier. This was because it was significantly cheaper to produce and simpler to design, and it was responsible for similar intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance ISR missions in contested airspace. The information about the insane speeds of Lockheed's future reconnaissance aircraft was also supported by the fact that in 2014, NASA awarded them a contract to study the feasibility of developing a propulsion system using existing gas turbine engine technology. The contract, valued at $1.19 million, adjusted for inflation through 2025, provided funding for a study to assess the viability of a turbine-based combined cycle engine which would combine a low-speed turbine engine with a hypersonic ramjet scramjet. The team's main stumbling block was a common problem with hypersonic engines, bridging the gap between a turbojet's maximum speed of approximately Mach 2.2 and a scramjet's minimum operating speed of Mach 4. Aerojet Rocketdyne joined Lockheed in this effort, aiming to create a TBCC system for the SR-72 hypersonic demonstrator by 2023. In 2020, Lockheed representatives decided to once again delight fans by confirming that hypersonics had become a mature technology, and they were working with the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, to ensure that vehicles with such capabilities would be in the hands of the U.S. military as soon as possible. In 2021, the U.S. Air Force also began to stir interest, showing a sleek single-engine aircraft in a dark hangar in a promotional video. The crew immediately cranked up the brightness and revealed the magical SR-72 designation on its fuselage, further proof of Lockheed's hard work on yet another masterpiece. And as if that weren't enough, in the sequel Top Gun Maverick, we saw the fictional hypersonic jet Dark Star, which, as it turns out, was assisted in its design by, you guessed it, none other than Skunk Works. And with this came every hint that the fictional nature of the aircraft might not be so fictional. Another, no less important consideration is the selection of materials for such an ambitious aircraft. After all, they must be extremely heat resistant to withstand hypersonic speeds. And here we again recall building 648, which according to Skunk Works, is equipped with a sophisticated climate control system that allows them to work with the most exotic and often even environmentally sensitive materials. We're almost certainly talking about composite materials such as carbon or ceramic matrix composites. 
It's not enough to create a crazy project if it's only going to be a one-off. Lockheed specialists are aiming to make the SR-72 reusable, weight efficient, thermally driven, and suitable for thousands if not hundreds of thousands of hours of service. Putting all the pieces of the puzzle together, from mysterious losses and a new factory on the Plant 42 site to TBCC contracts and all sorts of hints, it becomes clear that this isn't just a pretty picture for investors, but a program deeply rooted in reality. The main opponents of the Son of Blackbird will be the Russian S-500 Prometheus anti-aircraft missile system, as well as the Chinese HQ-19 anti-missile defense and anti-satellite weapon system. But should we really be afraid of them if the U.S. manages to create a device capable of simply outrunning the reaction of even the most sensitive and advanced air defense systems of its adversaries? The question's currently an open one. For now, all experts agree that, although we will clearly hear about the SR-72 more than once in the next few years, its real readiness for entering service will not be earlier than the 2030s, where it'll be joined by the new American sixth-generation fighter F-47 from Boeing and the newest strategic bomber B-21 Raider from Northrop Grumman. You think the Skunk Works will be able to replicate the SR-71's triumph, making its successor less costly to American taxpayers? Or will new technology simply not tolerate financial compromises? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.